So I'm here today with Otis. We've been hanging out for probably about a week or so. Seems like a pretty cool guy. And he's agreed to give us the tour of his rig and talk a little bit about how he is able to sustain a life of perpetual travel. So let's throw it over to Otis. How's it going, man? Yeah, pretty good. So uh, as was mentioned, I have the uh, advantage of doing this sort of indefinitely. I have remote income. Um, I am a SharePoint consultant working with a with a firm. Um, and it doesn't really matter what SharePoint is, but it's I'm gonna walk a, around because I'm getting bad light. Keep going. I'm uh, sorry for interrupting. <clears throat> well, it's a Microsoft platform that can be used for intranets and servers and and, and and such. But I can do it all from the road, and uh, so that's what I do. I have a Verizon hotspot that I use. I have computer equipment in the van. Um, all off grid, solar up on the roof. Um, but, uh, battery bank made out of Trojan golf cart batteries back here. So this charges both off the alternator as well as the solar. You can see back there. Um, it was actually made as a Class B RV, so it came with the RV equipment um, designed to be hooked up to hookups, uh, meaning power, grid power, as well as water. So I have the holding tanks, um, but I use them off-grid. I've added solar power. I've added everything I need to do this off-grid. Right now I'm uh, in the desert. I took a shower, shaved my head this morning. You know, I can do that from anywhere. So how old a guy are you, if you don't mind me asking? How old does my beard say? No, uh, 28. 28. So you're a young guy, and you figured out a way to live a life of perpetual travel. What was your motivation for trying to start out to do this in the first place? So my first excursion in the uh, the vehicle life, and I've, I've told several people the story, so I'll do the short version, but uh, I'd moved in with a girl, we had a fight, I, I left in the middle of the night, and I slept that night in my car, which was a hatchback at the time, a little Suzuki. Uh, then the next night I did the same thing. At the time I was working construction, I just kind of kept going with it all summer, I lived in my car, didn't tell anyone, got a gym membership, showered. Uh, then the end of, you know, winter came and had to get an apartment like a normal person, and buy a buy a bed buy a couch buy a tv and, and as i was doing that i came to realize that i was resenting buying things just because i had a place to put them um, and that's really when i started to think about doing this and doing it better having amenities like being able to stand up being able to lounge out on your own bed take your own shower in your own space um, and i researched real seriously for a year or so before deciding on this vehicle uh, the <coughs> There's a part of that story I haven't told anyone, which uh, seems appropriate to tell now, but the, the argument when I left that girl's place was uh, about she wanted to travel and she assumed I didn't. <laughs> so how ironic, you might meet her on the road somewhere. Maybe. And uh, no hard feelings, just wave hello or whatever, share a beer, or pick yeah, right back yeah. up. You just, it's we, all good. We still stay in touch, yeah. actually. We're, we're not, you know, we're fine. But. So you went from discovering that it wasn't so bad to live in your, sleep in your car, and didn't want to start amassing things, but you've made a big jump to, you now don't do construction, you now travel and you've committed yourself 100% to a pretty nice rig. What was the uh, attraction to saying, hey man, I don't want to just stay where I'm living mm -hmm. locally, I want to travel. How did that jump So take the place? travel aspect of it, yeah. Well, in part, it's somewhat a necessity if you're going to do this full time, that, you know, the whole snowbird aspect, because I was in the Northeast in Vermont and uh, harsh winters there for a vehicle. but. Really, more than that, um, I, I, I used to lead a, a very stable life, small apartment, savings every month, that sort of thing, and uh, so that first little experience in the hatchback was a, a catalyst for many things that it allowed me to see that I could live simply and enjoy living simply, but also that I enjoy change and doing things differently, and um, being able to figure out how to do it on your own, have that ingenuity to, to make your own way, and all three of those things, I think, are a part of how I ended up in a vehicle full-time and traveling. So you said that you used to live stably. You don't think you live stably anymore? Well, sustainably, yeah, but I, I just meant stable as in the, the typical uh, typical apartment and, and savings every month, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate to have that, that fixed income, and so I, still sustainable, yes, but different sort of, uh, different from what people would view as stable when you're out and about and moving all the time. So what would you say is going to be if you were to project out, I know none of us really like to think too much beyond tomorrow or next right, week, but right. if you were to, to like to say, I would like to 
have these experiences under my belt, whether it's the next year or whatever, whatever, you know, what are some things that you think you're going to want to try to fit in? In terms of where I want to go, what I want to see, uh, yeah. Well, this is my first time in the Southwest, actually, so I want to tour a few locations out there, do the Grand Canyon, Vegas, Slab City stuff. Um, but I never plan where I'm going to be one day to the next. Uh, I just pick up and go. Um, and that's another thing that I enjoy. I've never been woken up at night anywhere. I just go and find a place and see what's there. And I'm equally at home, you know, here in the desert. Uh, three weeks ago, I was downtown New Orleans. Um, you know, Thanksgiving I spent on white sand in, in Florida. And that's that's really what I, what I see in the future. And down the road, I, I don't know, I always thought one day I'd do the wife and kid thing, and I'm sure if that day comes, I won't be in a van. But other than that, I, I see no end. You might be on a boat instead? <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, the whole, uh, whole advantage is not being able to plan or, or not needing to plan. Right. What would you say to somebody that might be watching this that's a young person and they don't have, you know, a pension coming in or Social Security checks coming in and they want to live this lifestyle, but they don't know how they would be able to pay for things? What advice would you give them? The two, two pieces of, of advice I have that I tell people are... Um, Anytime you're not happy, it's time to move on. That one took me a little bit too long to learn. Um, and <clears throat> it's sort of like make do with what you have. If you're if you're afraid of getting into something um, down the road, you'll regret more of the things you didn't do than the things you the crazy things you did do. So it's make do with what you have. And if you're not happy, move on. How could they pay for stuff? What would they do? Well, uh, most people I've met on the road find their own way by uh, doing odd jobs, anything from landscaping to carpentry to I know a girl who picks up roadkill and skins animals and tans their hides with her own brains and sells purses she makes out of it. So that sort of stuff has been going on forever, but we also live in an age of more communications where young folks are uh, doing this too with mobile work. I've met a few here, a couple working for AT&T. Um, I mentioned I'm a SharePoint consultant. Uh, I know one gal is a developer who does independent work building websites. She works for herself. So the opportunities are out there. Sounds good. Uh, mind showing us your rig? Sure. So, we've seen the solar panels, we've seen the battery bank. Uh, let's see if we can get in here. I've got so, to... let's start with where did you find this? Yeah, so I mentioned I'd been researching for like a year trying to pick the right vehicle. Um, and I was l based in Vermont. I was searching as far south as like Virginia every night on Craigslist. I had like a complicated search string I'd plug in searching all the Craigslist between here and there. And it popped up one day in Salem, New Hampshire, which is only like two hours away from me in Vermont. Um, so I drove down, spent like five hours tearing this thing apart in the parking lot, checking it out, came back the next day with a loan and drove it away. So since you already have your van, would you be open to uh, sending me that complicated search string so I could paste it in the notes? Yeah, so I can do that. Okay, cool. So look in the notes if you guys want to know what uh, a computer guy's complicated shirt string is. <laughs> and uh, you could find yourself a van. It worked for Otis. Yep, yep. Yeah, let's... Uh... Does that uh, passenger chair spin around? Actually, no. It's not a full captain's chair, unfortunately. But uh, no. I can just get in between. Here, let me I just get in between. Yeah, going. Like this. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of room in there's here for me. There's more room than it looks. It's... Uh... So I'm 5'10", and I have full standing height throughout. Right here I have probably, what is that, six inches of headroom or something? Yep. This is um, actually the base of the, the shower, the basin. Uh, so because of that, this is, is higher. Um, so again, I'm 5'10", and with my shoes off, I clear everything in here. Um, when I bought it, you know, I had uh, the roof-mounted AC and things that I removed because, okay. first of all, I'm off-grid. I don't need them. They're dead weight. And it also allows me to, uh, you know, walk here through here without hitting my head on anything. Um, the uh, shower I mentioned, that's the basin for. Mm -hmm. It's sort of defined by the curtain when I open this door. And if I did, it would block you. You wouldn't be able to see. That's okay. But uh, the curtain runs around here. Um, this black piece I made that comes out. Uh, so that's the basin. I have hot water. Um, the shower I made out of copper and things I soldered together. This uh, switch here turns on my water heater and then I have real water pressure. How many gallons do you get? 
Um, it's a six gallon water heater, but I've got 16 gallons uh, for my fresh water tank. And actually I built a little illuminated viewing window you can see here when I press this switch. I don't know if that'll show up on Heck camera. Yeah. Yeah, but that that's the half line there because it goes below the floor. So I'm at, you know, eight gallons or so in my holding tank. That's brilliant. Plus the six in my... Uh, that's a great idea. Yeah, it's uh, easier than... Easiest way to see that. So you've got all the cabinets up top. Cabinets, yep. I've got uh, computer equipment. I, I sort of made use of all the hard to use space before the easy to use space. And uh, so I have like pockets sewn everywhere to carry my computer equipment and things that I need, which means that I haven't actually made use of the easy to use space, which is the cabinets that they're like half empty still. That's, that's a good way to go, man. Yeah, Let yeah. me trade places with you so I can get from the other side if that's okay. Yeah, that's probably good. Um, you so you've got these little shoe things right here. Yeah, pocket organizers everywhere. So, I mean, refrigerator, like everywhere. There's uh, more detail little in here than looks. Organizers hidden, hidden between the cabinets and under the seats. I have like a full Dewalt toolkit. Uh, I've got like a circular saw, reciprocating saw, shop vac. It's more stuff than it looks like in here. Refrigerator, cold beer. Can I have cold drinks anywhere I go? But, uh, That's propane? This runs off propane. It's a three-way 120 12 volt or propane, but it really propane is the way to go. Um, eventually I do want to upgrade to a 12 volt compressor fridge, but this came with the van and even though it's 17 years old, it works fine. Very efficient. How much propane do you go through uh, every month? What are you going through, do you think? I have a 40 pound tank and I only fill that about every six weeks. And uh, I'm a little bit more frugal with my propane than I need to be. I shut the fridge off at night, turn it on in the morning. Most people don't do that, but you know, I do. Uh, but between that, I have an RV furnace thermostat here, um, water heater, and nice to have a furnace. Yeah, yeah, it's convenient. And like I said, about six weeks. Uh, figure while you're over there, if you want to see the shower. Sure. <coughs> Door locks there. I don't know how well this is going to pick up, but I'll just put it in here yeah. so you've got the light to what come in, so do. plenty of room. It's a wet bath, so you've got a toilet right there. Yep. Hot and cold coming in, and then you put the curtain around it. And you have your own little shower space. Yeah, this runs around here again with the floor that comes out. And uh, this, I had, <clears throat> when I bought it, there was some foolish plastic thing in here. I checked that, soldered some stuff up, uh, used a low, low flow shower head, and I get what well, I can show you here. Spray that in the toilet. That's like house pressure, you know? Oh, wow, that's a lot. Right. And you hear the pump kicking on there. I have an accumulator tank for the pressure. Okay. So you've got the construction background, which really probably helps you out to do this kind of stuff. I was never, I was never really afraid of like, how am I going to do this? It was more of like, I'm going to do this and I'll just figure it out. Right. Um, so that's another one of the things that uh, I think is important in this lifestyle to have a bit of ingenuity, but that doesn't mean you have to have plumbing and an accumulator tank. There are plenty of people who are happy living, um, you know, they have a thousand dollar van and they do the spray bottle thing or whatever and it's whatever works for you. But there are a few things I wasn't willing to give up and one was being able to stand up and take a shower. Another was having cold beer and, and that's why I, uh, I'm in this vehicle. Absolutely. So let's see the front real quick. So the, the way you sleep is this pulls out? Yeah, this yeah. is the overcab bed. The back does convert to a bed too, but I find it easier to use this. This pulls up to here. This folds down, and that's actually a full-size futon mattress up there, so 75 inches. So uh, that's plenty of space for me. It's actually, you know, two beds in the size of this little van. This curtains made up out of blackout material and snaps. Click, click. Those actually total our total light seal at night. Okay. Another one of my little philosophies. Um, I've been really meticulous about making everything easy to use. If there's something that I'm going to have to trip over and move around every day, it's not worth it to me. So, you know, everything, pans I can get to, they're secure while driving, but they're just right there. Of, uh, is that, uh, it looks like kind of seatbelt material. <laughs> that is actually the seatbelts that were from the, I cut the seatbelts out of the back when I got it. I figured, uh, nothing goes to waste, right? Yeah, right. Um, I don't know if you, Little uh, curly bits of Romex actually hold my drinking glasses. I routed this out, put it on the inside of the cabinet. On, Very cool. Little things. Cast iron, flip lever. Just one flip to get my pan. Very nice. You know, anything that's going to be a headache isn't worth having in the van, if you ask me. What I try to encourage people to do is if you're if you're not happy, is just it's time to move on. Because I, talking about that stable life I had earlier, I had a 
job working nine and a half years at the same place and uh, always knew that I wanted to do something different, didn't know what it was, and uh, now I just have the advantage to do whatever I want. There are so many people who say, I want to move to Virginia or, you know, and then you're locked into trying to find a way to both schedule um, getting a new job, moving your apartment, whatever you have, and in this life, you don't have those restrictions. You go where you want, you see what you want, and then you decide. Did you ever have moments of private reflection when you felt uh, you had the nine-year job that you felt stuck and you felt like mentally stuck and you didn't know what you were gonna, where you were gonna go, what you were gonna do? You didn't know what kind of plan you were gonna have. Did that ever happen? Yes. When I had that job, I had a lot of, I had a lot of time like that when uh, I knew I needed to do something different. Didn't know what it was, and um, that's why I'm saying move on. And since I've, since I've done this, I've been in this van for almost a year now. Uh, I can honestly say I have no regrets about it, not at all. So even if somebody's watching this and they feel like Otis did it, but I don't know, man, he seems like a really smart guy. I just don't know if I could do it. I've got other circumstances that maybe he doesn't have or didn't go into. I feel like I'm stuck. You're saying I felt that way and I still did it. So anybody else can do it. I really think anyone can do it. Again, it's, you know, your, your abilities are going to play into it. But what I would say is uh, don't be afraid of it and make do with what you have. There are whole range of people making do with uh, what they have and um, you know it doesn't need to be a big fancy van either. If anybody sees your rig uh, out and about and want it, wants to come meet you is that okay? Of course I always hand out my contact info and anyone wants to say hi is uh, feel free. Very cool man thanks a lot for taking time to share your story I think it's a really good one. Anytime thanks for being out here. Down the middle